वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू टू दिस क्लास टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू बिगिन आर फर्स्ट वन पोयम फ्रॉम द लिटरेचर पार्ट सो एज वी नो द फर्स्ट वन पोयम इज डस्ट ऑफ स्नो डस्ट ऑफ स्नो दिस पोयम is written by robert frost so before going through the poem i would like to give you a brief introduction about a brief introduction of the poet so look at there on the screen there is picture of robert frost got it and the poet robert frost was born on 26th march 1874 and died on 29th january 1963 robert frost who was basically an american poet but his work was initially published in england before it was published in america though he was an american but his work was published in england first and then later on in america robert frost is basically known for his realistic depictions of rural life and his command of american colloquial speech and many works of him were written in new england or written on new england so as i told you basically or mostly he is known famous for his realistic depictions of rural life okay underline this part he was very famous and his poems were also very much appreciated by many people he was poet laureate to he was awarded the pulitzer prize for poetry four times he was the only poet who was awarded with this prize four times besides he was also awarded congress congressional gold medal so these were his achievements so such a great poet he was got it and last year you had the poem the road not taken again you had find, you, you are already aware with this poet the poems of him are really compels us to think to consider even a single even a small matter of our life as we have seen in the road not taken yes so same same here the dust of snow fire and ice in both poems you will find how how heart warming poems are there yes how heart warming and inspiring and his poems compel us to think yes such poems he has written so 
Look at there the first one poem that we have in our syllabus is Dust of Snow. Dust of Snow, I am going to read out the introduction of the poem. Look at there the introduction is given. The poem Dust of Snow opens in a scene where the poet is in a bad mood. Where the poet is in bad mood. And in his bad mood, he is walking by a hemlock tree as it happens with everyone. Yes, as it is said, he is known for his realistic descriptions. Yes, so same thing when we are in bad mood, we could have walk or we go somewhere in the forest or in jungle or somewhere. Yes, so the same the poet as in bad mood is walking by a hemlock tree and while he was walking by a hemlock tree what happens a crow happens to throw snow dust on the poet snow dust means a tiny particles of snow tiny particles chote chote okay so crow happens to throw Happens, happens to throw snow dust on the poet. But remain, but, but again, look at there. It is not clearly mentioned whether the snow was sitting on the branch or flying away or readjusting itself or shivering. It is not mentioned what is the cause behind the throw of snow dust but it happens got it we are or the readers are left in doubt so here a crow happens to throw snow dust on the poet and due to the snow dust suddenly the mood of the poet changed instantly the mood which was previously bad suddenly changed. So, the day which was horrible for the poet, which he had vested in bad mood, but now the rest part of the day is saved. The rest part of the day is saved by the crow and the hemlock tree. Got it? Why the poet has mentioned here or beautifully used here the references of the crow and the hemlock. Look at there. As we know, the crow and the hemlock tree both are bad omens yes and they are used for negative references by the many writers by many poets in many works yes actually the crow and the hemlock tree both are used for negative references but here you might have find, found that the poet has used both the crow and the hemlock tree in a positive way. Yes? Got it? So, look at there in the next point. But here the poet used them, the crow and the hemlock tree, very beautifully to portray the inauspicious Things can bring happiness and joy too. Got it? The inauspicious things can also bring happiness and joy. Got it? As the poet got here by the crow and the hemlock tree. So, here the poet appeals appeals the reader to accept whichever way nature has used 
दो इट इज ऑस्पिसियस और इन ऑस्पिसियस विच एवर वे द नेचर हैज यूज टू ब्लेस अस टू ब्लेस वन वी मस्ट एक्सेप्ट यस वी मस्ट एक्सेप्ट वट एवर द वे द नेचर हैज यूज टू ब्लेस अस गॉट इज दो इट इज ऑस्पिसियस और इन ऑस्पिसियस सो दीज लास्ट टू पॉइंट्स आर द समरी और वट कैन से आर द मैसेज ऑफ द पोएम गॉट इट द मैसेज ऑफ द पोएम इन ऑस्पिशियस थिंग्स कैन ब्रिंग हैप्पीनेस एंड जॉय एंड वी मस्ट एक्सेप्ट विच एवर वे नेचर हैज यूज टू ब्लेस अस और टू ब्लेस वन गॉट इट सो नाउ डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड the introduction of the poem now look at there in the picture it is just imaginary poet is walking walking by the hemlock tree look at there the hemlock tree is given a crow is there again on a, a branch of the tree and some tiny particles are there yes so now look at there in the poem what is given in the first stanza in the first stanza the lines are the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree yes so look at the meaning dust of snow as i told you a tiny particle pa tiny particles of snow or small particles of snow and hemlock as you know a poisonous tree or plant with white flowers yes so now the poem as i told you the poem is set in a scene where the poet is in a bad mood as i just told you something wrong has happened with him the cause is not given here the reason is not given here why he was in bad bad mood because of the or due to the unknown reason the poet was in bad mood and therefore he is nervous and gloomy therefore the poet is nervous and gloomy and in his gloom the poet is walking by a tree walking by a tree hemlock tree and that tree is hemlock tree which is a poisonous mostly used for bad omen in many works as i told you the hemlock tree which is and the crow too are famous for bad omens yes so look at there what is given while walking by the tree while walking by the tree suddenly some tiny particles of snow dust of snow or snow dust falls on the poet falls on the poet so as we have seen there in the first line the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree so here the poet says while he was walking by the tree suddenly some tiny particles of snow that means snow dust or dust of snow falls on the poet where exactly it falls is not mentioned whether it is on his head or shoulder shoulders it is not mentioned but it falls due to a crow which is there on one of the branches of the tree again readers are not cleared out about the action of the crow whether it is landing shivering or flying away or readjusting itself it is not mentioned but the meaning of these four lines is the meaning meaning of these four lines is while the poet was walking by the tree suddenly some tiny particles of snow that means dust of snow falls on the poet where exactly it falls is not mentioned but it falls due to a crow which is there on one of the branches of the tree got it 
this is the meaning of these four lines got it understood now the next one the last stanza look at the what is given there has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day i had rued rued means held in regret he was regretting he was in gloom he was in bad mood due to the unknown reason yes so what happened there the falling of the snow dust on the poet changes his mood entirely the falling of the snow dust has changed his mood entirely due to the unknown reason he was unhappy but the particles of snow fell on him fell on his head changes his gloomy mood instantly he has look at the given has given my heart a change of mood that means this the falling of the snow dust has changed the entire the mood of the poet entirely and he has already wasted some part of the day in his bad mood but the rest part of the day is saved by the crow and the hemlock tree so look at the in the last line last two lines here he said and saved some part of a day i had rued that means the falling of the snow dust has saved saved the rest part of the day as some part of the day has been wasted by the poet some part of the day has been wasted by the poet in his bad mood as he was unhappy as he was regretting in that he has wasted the some part of the day but the rest part of the day was a day is saved by the crow and the hemlock tree so the poet appeals the reader to be open and accept everything though it is thought inauspicious in a positive way so here by this poem dust of snow the poet robert frost appeals the reader appeals the reader to be open and appeals the reader to accept everything though it is inauspicious or bad omen or whatever but accept everything in a positive way so at last the poet wants to say us be positive and think positive everything will be saved so this is the meaning of this poem the dust of snow dust of snow understood understood the poem got it so now look at there some poetic devices literary devices have been used here in the poem so what are these first of all we are going to see rhyme scheme what rhyme scheme has been used here in this poem so as i taught you last year how to identify the rhyme scheme so to identify rhyme scheme what we have to do we have to think about the ending word of each line yes and its pronunciation yes its sound so look at there in the first line the last word is crow the way a crow crow and sec this uh, and the next word in the next line shook down on me 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 is the last word in third line snow in the fourth line last word is tree look at there in the poem look at there in the poem the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree 
सो टू थिंक अबाउट द राइम स्कीम वी हैव टू थिंक और वी हैव टू कंसिडर द लास्ट वर्ड ऑफ ईच लाइन द एंडिंग वर्ड ऑफ ईच लाइन सो लुक एट द एंडिंग वर्ड्स ऑफ द फोर लाइन्स क्रो मी स्नो ट्री and to give rhyme scheme we have to use the alphabets a b c d etc so for the first word crow we are giving here a and now pronounce the next word me and find whether it has same sound crow me crow me dutch do they have same sound no definitely not it is crow it is me sound is different yes now so give it b a and b crow is a and me is b now pronounce the third one snow crow snow crow snow crow yes snow has the same sound as the crow has yes snow has the same sound as the word crow has so give it a again then now pronounce the last word tree 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 and then pronounce me me tree look at there the sound of tree is similar to me yes yes or no does it similar to snow or crow does it similar to snow or crow no definitely not it is similar to me so give there the alphabet b so now what is the rhyme scheme a b a b a for cray crow sorry b for me a for snow and b for tree crow snow me b a b a b got it in the first four lines now in the last four lines what is there again same we have to do has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day i had read so now just again pronounce the word heart does it have similar sound with the, the previous ones no crow me heart different so give it c then mood mood heart crow me all are having different sound so give the give it d d alphabet now pronounce part part heart part heart yes so heart we have given it c alphabet so now give the part c alphabet again then mood rud mood rud so give it d so now look at here did you understand the rhyme scheme c d c d so what is the rhyme scheme of the poem a b a b c d c d got it yes very good so now we are going to see the figures of speech that are used here in the poem so look at here the first one figure of speech which is used here is alliteration what is alliteration alliteration as we have seen last year it means the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words got it the occurrence of the same letter or sound same letter or sound at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words look at there for example has given my heart has given my heart and saved some part so look at there in the first line has h sound heart h sound look at there h h letter or h sound h sound is repeated in the same line h sound is repeated in the same line so this is the first one example of alliteration look at the h sound has heart yes 
then in the second look at there and saved some part and saved some part and saved some part so look at there again same sir sound saved sir some sir sir sound is again repeated in the next line so in both lines there is alliteration as in the first line her sound is repeated and in the second line sir sound is repeated so it is alliteration got it now and jump meant it is again another figure of speech here what you will see when the same sentence continues to the next line without the use of any punctuation mark it is called and jump meant and it has been used throughout the poem look at there no punctuation mark no comma no full stop is used there in this poem throughout the poem so the whole poem is written in and jump meant the way a, a crow struck down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree so look at there single line is broken into various lines or single sentence is broken into next lines without using comma or full stop so this figure of speech is called enjambment then inversion what is inversion so inversion so look at there another figure of speech that has been used here is inversion so look at there what is inversion inversion is when the structure of the sentence of a sentence is changed by the poet to create rhyme actually this is a poetic license given to the poets so here as we know the structure of a sentence what is the structure of sentence the basic structure subject plus verb plus object but many poets change the structure of a sentence just to create rhyme scheme and actually this is called poetic license so here you can see in the first stanza inversion the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree yes so in the first stanza the poet has used inversion then another figure of speech that has been used here is assonance assonance means the prominence of vowel sound throughout a line is called assonance the prominence of vowel sound look at here i said vowel sound and in alliteration consonant sound but a beginning letter or sound yes but here in assonance vowel sound so look at there in stanza 1 line 2 shook down on me so there o sound is prominent shook o down o on o o sound is prominent and that's why there is assonance got it so now these are the literary devices that have been used here in this poem got it so this way the poem is completed here do write the meanings and the literary devices in your notebook got it and i hope you all have understood the poem better so have a good day and enjoy the day see you tomorrow in our next lecture okay bye bye have a good day